We are on the record. The time is 10.03. Today is March 5, 2020. This is the video deposition of J.C. Andres in the matter of Myra Martinez versus Sheriff Mike Williams et al. Would counsel please identify themselves for the record and the court reporter will swear in the witness. Kirby Johnson on behalf of plaintiff, Myra Martinez. Sean Granite for Andres, Chastain, and Vickery. Testimony you are about to give to your son, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, can you please state your full name for the record, please? My name's uh, John C. Andres, ID number 60228. Thank you. And um, is, it, is it Officer Andres? Um, do you yeah. go, do you, is, that, is that your rank with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, officer? Yes, sir. Okay. Is it okay if I refer to you as Officer Andres? That's fine, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, officer Andres, have you ever had your deposition taken before? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so you, are you familiar with the, the rules of a deposition? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'll just remind you that uh, we have a court reporter here with us today. She's, she can type down everything that we say, and she's very good at what she does. But what she can't do is type when we're both talking at the same time. Sometimes in natural conversation, you may know where my question is going and, and answer before I complete it. I just ask in this setting, let me try to complete my question before you provide an answer, and I'll try to let you complete your answer before I ask my next question. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> to, uh, Officer Andres, uh, I'm going to ask a little bit of background information about you. What, what is your date of birth? Uh, 2873. Okay. Are you married? Yes, sir. Do you have any children? Yes, sir. Okay. How many? Two. All right. And what are the ages? 20 and 15. Okay. Thank you. What is your educational background? I have uh, I finished, I have a uh, bachelor's degree in political, political science, sir. Okay. And where did you receive that uh, political science degree? At the uh, University of North Florida. Do you remember our, what year did you graduate? I believe it was 97. And that was in political science? Yes, sir. Uh, where did you go to high school? I went to uh, St. Joseph's by the Sea in uh, Staten Island, New York. Did you, uh, did you grow up in New York? I just lived there, sir. Okay. When did you move to Jacksonville? Uh, I believe in 1994. Okay. Is that when you started uh, at UNF? Uh, yes, sir. Like the, I believe the spring of 94. Okay. Uh, after graduating from UNF, uh, what, what, hap what did you do after that? Did you seek employment? Did you seek additional education? I worked for Hess, sir, as a retail manager. Okay. Hess, um, is that the uh, convenience store or gas station? Yes, sir. Okay. How long did you work for Hess? I believe about 13 years. Do you remember when you left Hess? Um, when I got hired on with the sheriff's officer. Okay. And what year was that? Uh, 2004. Okay. Did you uh, ever have any, any prior law enforcement uh, employment prior to Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Tell me a little bit about the uh, process uh, when you became employed at JSO. Did you apply? Did you apply to be an officer with JSO? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, walk me through the application process. Um, did they? Well, after you submitted your application, did they hire you at that point and then send you to uh, training? Is that yes, how sir. that works? Okay. Uh, do you? Did, were you trained by JSO? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you tell me about uh, your training and when that occurred? Did that occur right when you first got hired? Well, uh, let me know. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I went through BLE at first okay. and got certified. Um, what is BLE? A basic law enforcement through FSCJ. And then when, once I um, got certified, that's when I, like later on, I applied with the sheriff's office. Okay. And so the BLE uh, 
And that was at FSCJ, you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that a course that is taught by JSO, or is it, are they affiliated with JSO uh, in what they teach in that course, or is it separate? Um, is it a separate entity than, than JSO altogether? There's no affiliation between the two. I think there is, sir, because some of the instructors work for JSO. Okay. Okay. Uh, what, what did that certification, I believe you said you, you took that course and you became certified? Yes, sir. Okay. What does that certification uh, allow you to do? Um, that becomes, uh, it allows me to become a certified uh, officer that I can apply through the state of Florida through any department. Okay. Is that, uh, if you have this certification through the basic law enforcement course taught at FSCJ, do you also have to go to the police academy? Uh, yes, sir, with a JSO orientation class okay. as a hired employee. Okay. Um, is that the only... But what, what did you do during the JSO orientation class? Uh, pretty much um, they showed us like how JSO policies are and we went through the JSO training. You, you did go through the JSO training? Yes sir. Okay and how long did this training last? I believe it was eight weeks, eight or nine weeks. Okay. Is it something along the lines of about 770 hours? Is that sound approximate? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know how many hours that was, sir. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Was it the full, uh, to, to your knowledge, uh, was it the complete police academy that you did? Uh, or, how, how do I phrase this better? The fact that you were certified prior to attending the police academy, <coughs> did that allow you to skip parts of the police academy training? Objection. You can answer, unless I tell you not to. Okay. Uh, can you repeat the question, sir? Sure. To, to the best of your understanding, uh, did the certification that you had received uh, from the basic law enforcement training at FSCJ, did that uh, allow you to uh, skip certain parts of the uh, police academy training provided to you by JSO? No, sir. Okay. It was... Uh, the state certification is just like a basic journal that's um, taught about state statutes and what you can do as a police officer. Okay. And then we went through extensive JSO training so we can train with JSO policy um, and how they do things. Okay. Did this training, uh, it involved, did it involve classroom settings and then a practical application setting? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, how do you recall uh, tell me about what they ta taught you at the police academy about um, what do you remember if they taught anything from the police academy about uh, responding or intervening if you see um, a crime happening uh, can, can you clarify when you say police academy mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're referring to the BLE or the JSO portion. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, and just just to be clear, and maybe this will clear it up. If I, if I'm talking about the police academy, I'm talking about the JSO portion, and I'll refer to the prior training as BLE or, or the basic law enforcement. I'll try to make that distinction. Okay. S so, what what is your or do you recall um, during the police academy training? Uh, them discussing or telling you about the JSO's policies and procedures about intervening? Yes, sir. Okay. What do you recall them uh, training you about intervening? That if somebody used excessive force, that we need to have the duty to stop it um, and then render aid to anybody that needs it and then, you know, notify your supervisor of any policies that are broken. Or I'm, I'm sorry, violated. Okay. Do you remember who uh, at the academy taught taught th taught that course or taught that curriculum? No, sir. It's been a while. That's it. Uh, 
after you graduated from the, um, well, did you graduate from police, police academy? Yes, sir. What was your first uh, position with JSO? I was a recruit in field training. Okay. Tell me about the uh, field training process. Um, we had to ride with an officer that trained us, but, um, and then that took about three work cycles each, so about a month and a half, or I'm sorry, sorry three months of training with a field training officer and then an extra nine days before we were on our own. Is the field training uh, portion of, of your employment, was that essentially, were you like a, like a, a ride along with a more experienced police officer? Is that, is that a fair way to say it? I wouldn't say ride along, sir, because we were actually being trained on how to do police work with that training officer. Okay. And made sure that training officer showed us how, we, how our policies, um, you can use that on the streets. Okay. So the field training officers would essentially be teaching the recruits what the policy and procedures is? Yes, sir. After you've com you completed the field training portion, um, were you then out on your own? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, tell me about your first, uh, when you were out on your own, what zone you were in, what watch you were in, kind of what were some of your responsibilities? Well, when I first came out, sir, I was assigned to Zone 3 patrol. Um, I wore watch 5. Okay. It's like the later afternoon shift. Okay. And where, where is Zone 3? What is that? What is your understanding of what Zone 3 covers? Z Z by zone, you mean some, a geographical area. D do you not? Yes, sir. Okay. Where is Zone 3 within Jacksonville? Um, south of Beach Boulevard, um, over to the intercoastal, west of the intercoastal, right before Jacks Beach. Um, east of San, uh, the St. John's River and all the way down to St. John's County Line. Okay. Thank you. And at that point, uh, well, you were an officer uh, on your own at that point? Yes. Okay. And do you remember what, what time or what year that you were officially out on your own as a police officer? It was October 2004, sir. Okay. okay. And what... How long from the time that you left Hess to the time that you became a police officer on your own? I believe you testified they were both in 2004. Um, how long was it from the day that you, you left Hess to the day that you became a police officer out on your own? I believe it was about a week, sir. Um, the sheriff's office gave me a phone call, a letter that I start at a certain time. And I started April 28th. Okay. So, I'm sorry, about two weeks because I had to give two weeks notice. So April 28, 2004 is when you first start with JSO, and then by October of 2004, you've completed your training, you've completed your field training, and you're, out, and you're on your own? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Andres, I'm going to kind of switch, shift gears a little bit. Um, we are here today to talk about uh, an incident that involved uh, Ms. Myra Martinez. Uh, are you familiar with this incident? Yes, sir. Um, specifically, I'm referring to an incident that occurred within the Sally Port or the pretrial detention facility of the uh, Duval County Jail. Are you familiar with that area? Yes, sir. Okay. And throughout this, I may refer to it as the pretrial detention facility or the Sally Port or the PTDF. Um, just know that, that what I'm talking about is the area um, where the incident occurred with Ms. Martinez, if I refer to those places. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir Andres, have you reviewed anything prior to today's deposition? Yes, sir. Okay, and what have, what have you reviewed? The, um, I've gotten the video from the PTDF, sir, 
my uh, video interview with integrity unit the um, the interview the, in the written form of um, I believe that's it okay okay when did you re last review those uh, last night When you reviewed those last night, did it help refresh your recollection of these events? Of yes, the, sir. Of, I'm sorry, of the events that occurred within the Sally Port? Yes, sir. Okay. I want to ask you uh, a few questions about that. If you could just describe uh, or tell me what uh, you were doing there that day. I was dropping off a prisoner. Okay. Um, and was that prisoner's name Lucius Richardson? Yes, sir. When you arrived to drop off uh, Lucius Richardson, was anybody with you? My uh, CSO recruit, sir. Okay. Your CSO recruit, uh, would that make you the, his field training officer? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you remember your uh, CSO recruit's name? Jean-Paul Smith. Now, when you say corrections officer recruit, um, is there a difference between, I mean, what is the difference between the recruit, a police recruit and a community service offer, officer recruit, uh, if any? Objection of form. Okay. He's just uh, a, C a CSO recruit, sir, is a civilian employee that handles traffic crashes. Okay. Is that what he was training to become, a service officer? Yes, sir. Okay. And you're a police officer. Um, or, uh, I guess my question is, is, is a community service officer uh, often trained by police officers? Yes, sir. Okay. When you and uh, CSO Smith, or the recruit Smith at that time, uh, arrived at the Sally Port, was Officer Borashade already there? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what did you witness when you arrived there? Um, but I saw Miss Martinez there. Um, I believe there was another female prisoner, and Officer Chastain was there. Officer Borisati was there, and somebody, another officer there, sir. I, I don't know what department he was with or agency. Okay. At some point did, well, let me show you this here. We'll mark this as, as plaintiff's one here. Uh, do you recognize uh, what this is a, what this picture depicts here? Is that the Sally Port, as, as you recall it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now there's a, a series of, of names uh, within little white boxes with arrows pointing to people here. Uh, it says here that uh, it looks like Andres with an arrow pointing up uh, to you. Is that you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. And then behind you, uh, standing there, that says Smith. Is that your community service officer recruit at that time? Yes, sir. And you see Officer Chastain standing over there in the general area with you as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you, when you, when you saw Miss Martinez, where was she positioned when you first arrived? I couldn't really recall, sir. Um, but she was there standing around. Okay. Would you, uh, at some point, did you see Miss Martinez um, walk in your general direction, walk towards you? Yes, sir. Okay. What happened then? Um, Officer Borisati um, escorted her and placed her right next to the uh, PTDF door, the uh, the gray door. Okay. And you saw you saw Officer Borisati do that? Yes, sir. Okay. When Officer Borisati pushed. Uh, I'm sorry, did you say pushed, pushed her back to the door? No, sir. Escorted her. Escorted her. Okay. Escorted her back to the door. 
What was towards the door, sir. Towards the door, thank you. What was Miss Martinez doing? Well, prior to that, sir, she was yelling and just rambling on. Okay. You know, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I cut you off. What was the question again, sir? That's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to my question. She was, you said she was uh, talking and rambling on. Do you recall um, what she was rambling on about? Uh, not specific words, sir, but she was kind of being belligerent. Okay. Uh, she wasn't happy that she was there. Okay. Um, do you have any idea as to why she wasn't happy? Um, from what I recall, sir, she was drunk or maybe high about something, on something. Um, and I guess, like, you know, she's under arrest and she wasn't too happy about that. At that point, did you have any idea what she was under arrest for? No, sir. Um, so, you, are you were you familiar with uh, what had happened during her during her arrest from Scores Gentleman Club? No, sir. Okay. To this day, are you aware of what happened to her during the arrest at Scores Gentleman Club? Somewhat. Okay. Going back, um, Officer Borsati escorted Ms. Martinez over to the area near the door in the trash can. Is that, is that fair? Around there, sir. Okay. What was Ms. Martinez doing uh, at that time? Prior or? At the time that she was escorted over. Um, I don't recall, but she, she got escorted and Officer Borisati moved away from her, like turned turned to his side to walk towards us, and that's when I saw her kick him, like his her leg come up. So I assumed it was a kick, okay. and he landed a couple of times on Officer Borisati. Okay. Where was Miss Martinez when she was making these kicks? Um, my view was kind of obstructed, sir. So I could still, at that point where the door is. I guess, like somewhere around the door, um, when Officer Borsati was walking up towards us. Okay. And you, how many times did Miss Martinez kick at Officer Borsati? I believe the first, the there was like two, if I recall. Um, it was two kicks, I believe. And is that based upon your memory or based upon your reviewing of the video? So, um, based upon my memory, sir. Okay. And did any of those kicks make contact with Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. Where did they make contact with Officer Borisati? What part of his body? From my vantage point at that time, sir, um, around his gen genitalia. Okay. And did you witness the, f from your perspective, did you witness the kick make contact with Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. What, after the second kick, uh, what did Ms. Martinez do? Um, from what I recall, sir, uh, she might have lost her balance. Could you see her lose her balance? That's what I believe, that from my vantage point, that she lost her balance. So from your vantage point, she lost her balance? Yes, sir. Okay. When she lost her balance, was she up against the wall? Um, this one, I, I believe Officer Borsati also was trying to control her at that point. Okay. Um, did you see Officer Borsati try to control her at that point? Um, the, the motion, the body motion that I noticed, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. What was Officer Borsati, um, well, after, after the second kick? What did Officer Borsati do? He, he moved towards her to try to control her. Okay. Um, and you saw him move, move towards her? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what did he do after he moved towards her? Um, I could see that there's still, you know, he was trying to control her, so there was like a little struggle. Um, 
I could still see her legs flailing up. I don't know if she was trying to kick him again. That's when I started to move over towards them because they kind of disappeared in the corner and to see if Officer Borsati needed my help to try to control her. Okay. And you said that they moved into the corner. Was it once they got into the corner that they became out of your view? Is that why you moved to get a better vantage point? Well, the whole time, sir, it's like it's kind of, kind of um, obstructed anyways. Um, I can only see their partial bodies, like the legs, and I can see Officer Borisad is moving, like in my vantage point, like he was trying to, the same time, like he's trying to control her, that he's trying to make some um, evasive maneuvers. Because, like I said, like I can still see her leg flailing. Okay. I don't know if she was trying to kick him. I assume that she was trying to kick him at that still at that point when he was trying to control her. Okay. Okay. What were was there any sort of uh, exchange between Miss Martinez and Officer Borisade at this point? A verbal exchange. Is there any words going back and forth? I didn't hear anything, sir. Okay. Did you hear you did, you did not hear Officer Borisade make any commands to Miss Martinez? No, sir. I mean, nonverbal. I didn't hear anything nonverbal. Uh, okay. What about nonverbal commands? Um, it was just nothing, sir. Nonverbal. Uh, you could, if you could, if you count con trying to control the subject as nonverbal, then yes, sir. Okay. What were the like ways? His actions. What were the ways that he was trying to control his, his subject? Well. Like I said, sir, I couldn't really see when he disappeared in that corner. So I assumed like he was trying to just make a counter move. Because from my, from, my, from my vantage point, I assumed that she was still trying to kick him. So he was trying to push her against the wall. Okay. At any point in time, did you see Officer Borisati strike Miss Martinez? No, sir. At any point in time, did you see Officer Borisati punch Miss Martinez? No, sir. Tell me what happened whenever you started, uh, I believe you said that you started walking towards Officer Borisade uh, once they got in the corner. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. What, uh, what were you doing at that point? As when I walked towards him? Yes. Or after I made contact with him? As you were walking over to Officer Borisade, what were you walking over to Officer Borisade to do? I was trying to see if he wants me to help him control her. Because like I said, sir, I can still see her legs flailing from my vantage point. I don't know if she was still trying to kick him or not. Okay. So I went over there, and based on his movements, you know, like like I said, like you, you, if he was trying to make some counter moves by blocking her kicks, but I assumed that she needed some help to control her, so that's what I wanted to do, was walk over there to see if he was needing, needing my assistance. Okay. trying to control her. Okay. Um, when you uh, got to where Officer Borisati was, um, did you say anything to Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. What did you say? Well, he had her pinned against the trash can on the wall and had it under control. That's when I said to her, that's what I said to Officer Borisati, don't be stupid, they got cameras here. <clears throat> okay. Why would you, well, 
strike that. What did you mean by don't be stupid? Well, sir, you know, post Ferguson time, like everybody talks about, you know, cameras, you know, um, I can see that Officer Barsati, you know, got kicked and I didn't want him to retaliate on her. So I don't want him to make a mistake that you're, hey, she's okay now, she's under control, don't, don't do anything stupid that's gonna cost you her job. Okay. Um, but prior to approaching Officer Borisade, had you seen Officer Borisade do anything wrong? No, sir. You had, but you did see Ms. Martinez kick Officer Borisade? Yes, sir. Okay. You walk over to Officer Borisade and you say, don't be stupid, they have cameras here. Yes, sir. Did you um, make contact with Officer Borisati? Did you touch Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. I just kind of grabbed him by the left arm. I, I'm sorry, the right arm. Okay. Like touched him, not really grab him, but just put my hand on his right arm. Okay. Why did you do that? Just to kind of like, you know, hey, you're okay. You know, she's under control. What happened uh, after, uh, well, after that, did you, uh, after you told Officer Borisade, hey, everything's under control, what did you do then? Um, I looked at Ms. Martinez to see if she was okay. Um, I what, did, what did you mean by I looked at Ms. Martinez to see if she was okay? To see if she was all right, sir. I mean, after Officer Borisade, uh, came off of her. Um, she stood up and made sure that she was okay. How did you uh, see if Miss Martinez was okay? Um, just her, to see if how she reacted. Um, how did she react? Uh, she regained her control. Um, she leaned on the wall against on her, on her, on her own, and then sat down on her own. You saw her sat down on her own? Yes, sir. Did she go down in a controlled manner and sit uh, like she was intending to sit? To From what I recall, sir, yes. No. Go ahead. From what I recall, sir, yes, sir. Okay. At any point did you see Miss Martinez fall over? Uh, at that time, sir, I don't recall that. But on after watching the video that, it, that I, I remember. Um, other than seeing that she, um, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Tell me again what she did uh, after uh, Officer Borisati. Well, what happened after the uh, interaction with Officer Borisati? What did Miss Martinez uh, do? Tell me. Tell me her body actions. Objection for. Like I said, sir, she she got up on her own power, like leaned on against the, the door and the wall, and then cursed out Officer Borisati, and, and then sat down, and what that's when I walked away. You said she cursed out Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. Do you recall any of the specific words she was saying? I believe she said, I, if I recall, sir, she said, uh, I got you now, you motherfucking nigger. So, Ms. Martinez is, uh, from your perspective, uh, controlled, uh, in control of her own faculties at this point? I wouldn't say control of her own faculties, sir, but she was, she was on her own control, on her own power, like she was able to stand up, lean against the wall, and sat down. She sat down in a controlled fashion? Yes, sir. 
at any point in time did you did it did it cross your mind that Miss Martinez may be in need of medical help? No, sir. <coughs> Do you know if Ms. Martinez was handcuffed at the time? Yes, sir. Her handcuffs were behind her back? Yes, sir. Did you say anything to Officer Borisati after this? After the incident, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. After, probably like after rescue left, um, he, he stood right next to me as he handed the phone to the corrections sergeant. All right. Well, let me let me back up then. We'll get we'll get there eventually. Let me let me back up though. Okay. okay. Um, what did you do uh, after you saw Miss Martinez um, go down to the ground? I went over to the side where I was standing at, sir. Okay. And that was over there with Officer Smith and and Officer Chastain. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any conversations with Officer Smith or CSO? recruit Smith and Officer Chastain at that time? Yes, sir. What you guys talk about? Um, Officer Chastain was asking me about um, the CSO program because that was like Officer uh, CSO Smith was the first group of CSOs that we hired again. So he was asking about like when do they actually be on solo and some other stuff we were talking about. Okay. And this was after the incident involving or after the altercation between Officer Borisati and Ms. Martinez? Yes, sir. Okay. Did you, Officer uh, Chastain, or recruit, uh, CSO recruit Smith, discuss what Ms. Martinez at all? No, sir. Did you discuss Officer Borisati's actions at all? No, sir. Did Officer, uh, well, did Recruit Smith, uh, well, CSO Recruit Smith was, you were his field training officer, is that correct? Yes, sir. If he had uh, any sort of question on maybe how to handle this situation, would it be you that he would ask? Yes, sir. Do you know if, Mr. Smith saw what Officer Borishade did? No, sir. Is that a no you don't know? No, I don't know what he saw. Okay. Are you aware that Officer Smith gave a recorded interview to Integrity, Detective Cayenne, I believe, in this case? I don't know which detective, sir, but we were both called in through Integrity okay. the next morning. And I'm going to refer you to Plaintiff's Exhibit 1 there. Again, uh, in, this, in this still photograph here, uh, there's a date and time stamp at the bottom. I believe it's 4-27-2016 at 7-25-11 uh, p.m. Uh, does that sound about the, the right time of day that, that this incident occurred? I believe so, sir. Okay. Do you see on the bottom left-hand corner of the photo there where it says Borisati and it's got an arrow pointing up? Um, I see I'm the sorry, on the left side? Yes, sir. I see Borisati, but it, everything's a blur okay. on my copy. Right. And unfortunately, this is the, the still shot of the video that we, we've got. Um, in this photo, do you see what looks to be like a right arm extending... Uh, or Officer Borisati's right arm extended? I, like I said, sir, it's kind of blurry. If, if that's a right arm, then okay, if that's what you're saying, it's a right arm. You've seen, you've seen this video, have you not, sir? Yes, sir. Are you aware that Officer Borisati struck Ms. Martinez? Not at that time, sir. 
I understand, but since seeing the video, are you aware that Officer Borisati struck Ms. Martinez? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that a... From this from this photograph here, um, your recruit CSO uh, Smith is would he be standing behind you? Uh, as it relates to, are you standing in between Officer Smith and Officer Borisada? Yes, sir. Okay, you would be closer to Officer Borisada than Officer Smith was. Yes, sir. But it's, would it, well, I may have asked you this already, and I apologize if I have. I, I don't recall. But um, do you know if Officer or CSO Recruit Smith witnessed Officer Borisati's actions? No, sir. Okay. Is that true to this day? You, you still don't know if Officer Smith uh, witnessed Officer Borisati's actions? Well, I, I read the, one of the summations for um, integrity. Okay. So... Would it surprise you then that your recruit uh, at that time uh, witnessed Officer Borisati punching Ms. Martinez? Objection to form. Um, from, what, from the summation, sir, the integrity that I read, yes, sir. Okay. Was that the first time that you became aware that your recruit witnessed uh, Officer Borisati strike or punch Ms. Martinez? Yes, Objection sir. Objection to form. Oh, sorry. You know when those statements were given? I, I believe they were given the same day that I gave my interview with the integrity unit, sir. Would that have been the day after? Yes, sir. But you never talked to your recruit about what happened? No, sir. We're not allowed to. Why is that? Uh, if it's an ongoing investigation, sir, we're not. Detective Walcott told us, or my, in my interview, Detective Walcott said that don't speak to anybody about this. Okay. Did you advise, um, well, what is your understanding of what JSO's policy is uh, of what an officer is to do if they witness somebody, uh, another officer, uh, Punching an inmate. Uh, tell the supervisor if it's if they're using excessive force. Okay. Um, did you notify anybody of um, anything that Officer Borisade did? As far as uh, that night, sir. Yes. Um, after rescue had come and gone, um, Officer Borisati, like I stated before, Officer Borisati was speaking to, um, handed the phone to the correction sergeant because I guess he was talking to his PIC at that time, which turned out to be Officer Garriott. Um, he wanted him to do a witness RTR, a response to resistance report. All right, I'm going to back up a little bit. Um, all right, so after, after the incident occurred, did you go back to where you were standing before you walked over to Officer Borisati? After, after the altercation, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. I went back to that side. Okay. Um, where was Officer Borisati at that point? I couldn't recall, sir, but I know he was pacing back and forth and on the phone. Okay. Do you know who he was on the phone with? Um, later on, after, you know, on the video, like after the rescue had left, he was on the phone with his PIC. Um, do you have, at that point, did you have any idea as to why he was on the phone with his PIC? I have no idea, sir. Um, at that point, until I got handed the phone. What was Ms. Martinez as Officer Borisati was, was on the phone with PIC? At that time, rescue already had checked her out, so I believe she was right next to the door in the garbage can. Okay. All right. Do you know who called JFRD? No, sir. But you did not call JFRD? No, sir. Did your recruit call JFRD? Objection form. That no, you sir. know of? I don't believe so, sir. Okay. Did Officer Chastain call Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department? Objection That you know of? No, sir.
at some point in time did you see Officer Borisade uh, having a conversation, or what would appear to be a conversation, with the corrections officer kind of behind the, behind the glass there? Well, he handed the phone to the corrections sergeant, if that's who you're referring to. I don't... Okay. Who is the corrections sergeant? I don't recall the name, sir. At that point, were you aware of why the corrections sergeant was involved? No, sir. Um, besides what I overheard, Officer Borisati told the corrections sergeant that he wanted, his PIC wanted to talk to him, the corrections sergeant, and wanted him to do a witness RTR. Who wanted who to do a witness RTR? From what Officer Borisati was stating was he hands the phone to the correction sergeant mm -hmm. and the correction sergeant was asking him who is this and he said my PIC he wants you to do a witness RTR. If I recall that's what Officer Borisati stated. What is, a, what is an RTR? Uh, the response to resistance report. And when are those typically drafted? Um, if the CW or controlled electrical weapon was used, um, any pepper spray was used in the subject or a suspect, any deadly force was used or um, or shooting a suspect. Um, what about non-deadly force? Non-deadly force, sir. If an impact weapon was used, or if the subject or the suspect had any injuries do, during, by using of a physical force. So at that point, were you aware, did it make sense to you at that point, why the correction sergeant would need to fill out an RTR report? No, sir. Okay. Not at that time. Did you have, at that time, did you have uh, any knowledge that Jacksonville Fire and Rescue was on the way? They were... That was after JFRD already showed up, sir. Okay. Do you know why JFRD was called in the first place? No, sir. Did you see Miss Martinez move at all uh, once she was on the ground? I'm sorry, sir. Once Miss Martinez, after the altercation with Officer Borisani, I believe he testified earlier that she went to the ground. Well, she sat down. She sat down. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, at some point in time, did you did, did she did you fall over? Um, Objection of four. Did you see her fall over at some point after that? From at that time, sir, no, I don't. I I didn't. Um, but after watching the video, I did. You know, she did fall to the ground. Well, in my opinion, she banged her head on the ground at that point. Um, okay. From from where she stood, you know, from where she sat down at that time. Um, and then she was slouched down before rescue got there. Okay. Was she saying anything at this point when she's on the ground? She was quiet, sir, uh, compared to the time that before the altercation where she was, you know, verbally uh, rambling on. At that time, I just assumed that she was, um, you know, she was drunk, so she was like on her down where she was sleeping and sleeping it off before re when the rescue got there. Okay. Did you think Ms. Martinez was uh, faking an injury? Um, at that time, no, sir, uh, until fire rescue got there. I, I believe she was playing possum. As I what do you mean by playing possum? Like she was, rescue was having a hard time waking, you know, she was having a hard time responding to rescue, like, um, and based on the action of the rescue personnel, I believe, like, I made eye contact, you know, by the time I went there at one point to see how she was doing and what the rescue was doing. And one of the rescue personnel kind of, like, made a face that she's faking it. So I assumed that she was faking it. What kind of face did that? Um, just a face like, you know, she kind of smirked and, you know, nodded, you know, turned his head. Okay. Based on this smirk and nod and turn of the head, that, that was your, your belief that... It, that was you interpreted that to mean that Miss Martinez may have been faking what she was doing. I wouldn't say faking, sir, but like you know, playing possum. Like, and then, and then that's what I that's the word I use on the on the, on the interview with Detective Walcott. Right. I guess what I'm trying to figure out is what you mean by that exactly. 
Um, I guess, sir, like, you know, she was, I guess, like, she was playing possum, like, you know, she was pretending. Okay. All right. Um, talked about this briefly earlier, but um, as a police officer, are, are you trained in determining whether or not somebody is uh, faking their medical injuries? I, I don't understand the question, sir. Sure, and that was a poorly phrased question, so I apologize for that. But as a police officer, do you are you trained to make a determination as to whether or not somebody is or is not faking an injury? And how to make that determination? Are you trained in how to do that? Well, we're trained to to look for some clues if the person was in distress. Okay. Um, like if they were calling out. What if somebody banged their head on the floor and didn't say anything after that? Would that be a sign? Well, that could be a sign, sir. But at that time, in my vantage point, I didn't, I didn't know exactly what happened to her. And from her actions at that point, um, she regained control of herself, stood on, a, on a, leaned against the wall, and slid, and slid down or sat down on her own. Um, to me, she didn't appear to be in distress or in any medical distress. Okay, but I thought you testified earlier that she, she, she may have banged her head. Yes, sir, like in a controlled manner. In a controlled manner? Yes, sir. Okay. And it's, and it's because of that, you believe that she was playing possum? Objection of form. Or is it because of that that you believe she was playing possum? Objection of form. No, sir. Uh, like, I, like I said before, it's based on after rescue was already there, uh -huh. and they were checking up on her. That I made the assumption that she was playing possum because of how rescue was handling the situation where one of the personnel kind of gave me, a, you know, like that face nod or that smirk. Okay. To this day, do you know if Ms. Martinez has suffered any injuries as a result of that incident? No, sir. Okay. Kirby, can we take a quick bathroom break? Absolutely. Thank you. We are back on the record at 11.05. After the altercation between Officer Borashadi and Ms. Martinez, um, I believe you said that, well, what did you, I can't see from my notes here, but what did you say to um, Officer Borashadi right after the incident? Objection to form. After, you mean, sir, when I oh, walked up to him? Yes, I'm sorry. Did you, this is uh, right. At, I believe you testified. You said something. Don't be stupid. They have cameras here. Objection to form asked and answered. Okay, that's fine. I'm just trying to get a starting point after a break. Um, did you say anything else to Officer Borshadi at that point? At that point, when I walked up to him, sir. Yes. No, sir. But did you say anything to Officer Borshadi after that point? After he walked back, or I walked back, right or after, after, right after, any time after you said, "Don't be stupid." They have cameras here. Did you say anything else to Officer Borisade? Yes, sir. Um, after he handed the phone to the correction sergeant, we just had the little talk. Um, Did you talk to the correction sergeant? Not at that point, sir. He handed me the phone later on. And who was on the other line of the phone? Uh, PIC Garriott. Did you talk to PIC Garriott? Yes, sir. What did you and PIC Garriott talk about? PIC Garriott wanted me to do a witness RTR also. Tell me a little bit more about the conversation between you and PIC Garriott. Um, he asked me, you know, to do a, P, uh, like I stated, sir, a witness RTR. 
And I told him why. I didn't observe anything. What happened? And that's when PIC Garrett told me that according to Officer Borisati, that he hit her. And I told Officer uh, uh, PIC Garrett that I didn't see that, and then I didn't want to do a witness RTR if I didn't see anything. Because per policy, unless the only person that does a witness RTR is if you actually saw the incident and the suspect or the suspect or the person on the receiving end of the use of force complain of any injuries. And at that time, sir, I did not see what Officer Borisati, or was I, was, or was I aware of what happened? And further on the conversation is when um, I realized what Officer Borisati had done. You said further along in the conversation, you realized what Officer Borisati had done? Which conversation? Uh, with PIC Garriott, sir. Was PIC Garriott there? No, sir. What did PIC Garriott tell you about what Officer Borisati did? That Officer Borisati told him that he struck, uh, that he hit Officer uh, Miss Martinez. And at that time, sir, um, I didn't notice that the corrections officers were huddled around the TV monitor. And when I peeked over to what they were watching, I saw a glimpse of what they released on that video. Did you tell PIC Garriott that you did not witness this? At that time, sir? Um, yes. No, sir. I mean, yes, sir. I, I told him that I didn't witness what Officer Borisati had done, that he stated that he hit her. Okay, but... On the video I did... Hold on. Before we get there, I want to I want to know what you told PIC Garriott on the phone. Did you tell him that you did or did not witness what Officer Borisati did? I did not, I did not witness him hit her. That's what I told Officer Borisati. Did you witness Officer Borisati swing a punch in her direction? No, sir. Okay. You were con were you contacted by Integrity? Yes, sir. When were you contacted by Integrity? Um, the following morning. Why were you contacted by Integrity the following morning? If yeah, why were you contacted by Integrity the following morning? I guess they wanted to interview everybody that was in that, in the salad port, sir. Okay. Okay. Did you ever do an RTR report? Have I ever done one, sir? Did you ever do one for this incident? No, sir. Other than your interview with Integrity, well, let me back up. You were contacted by Integrity the next day. How were you contacted by Integrity? Uh, they called me on my phone, sir. On your cell phone? Yes, sir. Okay. Who called you on your cell phone? I forget who it was. Um, one of the Integrity detectives. Okay. And what did you and the Integrity detectives talk about on the phone? Well, they left the voicemail at first. Okay. And then when I called back, I told, you know, they told me if, they, if I could stop by their office. Okay. Do you still have that voicemail saved? No, sir. And this would have been on April 28th, the day after the incident that yeah. you received this phone call? Yes, sir. Okay. And they wanted you to come into the office. Did you ultimately go in to meet with the integrity detective? Yes, sir. Okay. And that was that same day that you received the phone call? Yes, sir. Were you aware that uh, CSO Recruit Smith was also going to be interviewed by Integrity that same day? Yes, sir. Did you contact your uh, Recruit Smith to discuss what's going to happen in Integrity? No, sir. Going back to the incident at the Sally Port, after the incident occurred, I believe you said you walked back over and was standing by Smith and Chastain and Officer Borisati was pacing back and forth at some point. 
did you, and to the best of your recollection, other than the phone call that, that you hopped on with PIC Garriott, was there any other conversations between you and Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. What were those conversations? Um, when he handed the phone to the correction sergeant, um, we just a small talk of what zone he was from. Um, I could still see that, you know, he was pacing back and forth and that something was bothering him. So I assume that, you know, he was being bothered with Officer, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Martinez beforehand. And I just told him, like, you know, hey, you know, don't let this bother you. You know, don't let these people bother you. When just you take a deep breath. When you said that, were you aware of what had happened? At that point, sir, no, sir. So was this conversation before you spoke with PIC Garrett? Yes, sir. Did you, were you there when uh, JFRD arrived? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you kind of tell me what you remember seeing when JFRD arrived? Remember? What you remember from when Jacksonville Fire and Rescue showed up at the scene to evaluate Ms. Martinez? What do you recall from that? Um, not much until the, la the latter part where everybody, even when the rescue um, ambulance came in, um, I remember they were all huddled, checking up on her. Um, and I think at one point, like, that's when I walked over to see how everything was, and that's when I made contact with that JSO, uh, JFRD personnel. You walked over to see how everything was. At the time that you had walked over to see how everything was, were you aware as to why rescue was called? No, sir, not at that point. Did you ask anybody why rescue had been called? No, sir. I just assume it's for Ms. Martinez. Why, why would you assume that it's for Ms. Martinez? At that point, sir, um, because Officer Borisati, I guess, like, was trying to um, get their attention. Um, so I just assume it was for Ms. Martinez. Okay. Was Ms. Martinez... Um, Was she, uh, well, after the, after the incident, altercation between her, Borisati, and Ms. Martinez, um, uh, Ms. Martinez, I believe you said, sat down, and then she may have ultimately fallen to her side. Um, At that point, was she screaming and, and yelling, and did she pe appear um, mad? As I recall, sir, at that point, um, she was just she was making sounds and and, and crying, um, and I kind of held it to the side, not huddled, but went to my to my side, you know, just to escalate part of the es the escalation process. Because she was mad at, you know, I'm just trying to, I'm wearing a blue uniform. I guess she was mad at the blue uniform, so I kind of, you know, kept that, that, that blue uniform out of her sight. Okay. Um, but she was crying? Yes, yeah, sir, if I, if I remember correctly, if I recall. Was she crying before the altercation with Officer Borsati? I don't believe she was crying, um, but she was, um, her, from what I recall, her, her face was disheveled, like, well, her clothes were disheveled, but her makeup was running, so she might have been crying before then. But when, prior to Officer Borisati going hands-on with Ms. Martinez, from your perspective within the Sally Port, did you ever see Ms. Martinez crying uh, before this altercation? No, sir. After the altercation between Borisati and, and Ms. Martinez, you did see Ms. Martinez crying? Yes, sir. But you don't know why she was crying? No, sir.
that is that part of and I'm, and I'm not trying to be flippant here I'm really not but would that be part of of playing possum I'm sorry sir would would her crying be part of her playing possum check check not at that point, sir. It was later on, like right before rescue or during what rescue arrived, is when I believe I stated that she was playing possum. Okay. Do you know when rescue was called? Um, from the video, sir, about 20 minutes later when they arrived. I don't know exactly when they were called. Okay. Do you, and, and I think you said you didn't know who called? No, Touch sir. The forum asked and answered. Did you ever think to call? Not at that point, sir. I had, there was no reason for me to call. But she was crying? Objection of form. Yes, sir, for a little bit. Okay. Did you, were, you, were you present, um, or how close were you to Miss Martinez, I guess it's a better way of saying it, when Miss or when JFRD arrived? Oh, I don't recall, sir, like, you know, how far I met. I was to stay at the same area in the same vicinity. Do you know if any, at any point in time before JFRD arrived that Miss Martinez lost consciousness? No, sir. Is that a no you don't know or no she did not lose consciousness? No, I, don't, I didn't know that. Okay. Did you witness any JFRD personnel use any sort of uh, smelling salts or anything to uh, wake Miss Martinez up? I don't recall, sir. you talk with uh, Officer Chastain uh, other than the general conversation about CSO recruits did you have any additional conversations with Officer Chastain following this uh, altercation between Borisati and Martinez um, I think we did but I don't recall what it was about sir would it have been about this incident no sir nothing about the incident Do you know if Officer Chastain ever met with integrity? I, I have no idea, sir. Okay. And to this date, you have not spoken with Af Officer Chastain about this incident? Just well, just a little bit, sir, but not nothing specific. When, when did this happen? When did that happen? Um, I think last week, nothing specific, because I saw I ran into him at the general counsel's office. And I don't want to know anything that you and your attorneys may have talked about, but I do want to know what you and Officer Chastain talked about. Can you, can you tell me a little bit more about that, please? Just that nothing specific about the case, sir, that you're here, I'm here kind of deal. Okay. Um, you're here, I'm here. Either one of you discuss Officer Borisati? I don't, I don't believe so, sir. Did either one of you discuss a video? Video of the incident at Sally Port? No, sir. Did any of you, uh, did you and you and Officer Chastain discuss um, intervening or uh, reporting this incident? No, sir. Did you and Officer Chastain discuss any media coverage of this incident? No, sir. Did you and Officer Chastain, um, well, do you know what happened to Officer Borisati? I 
from the new sir and from JSO circles that he got uh, fired. Is that the extent of what you know happened to Officer Borisadi as a result of this? And he got arrested, I get, from what I recall, sir. Do you know what he was arrested for? Uh, not the specific charge, sir. Do you know if, if he was charged with battery? I don't recall, sir. And when I say arrested for battery, I'm talking specifically about f for the incident that occurred in the Sally Port of the jail. I believe so, sir. You I'm believe not, that he was? I believe he was. Okay. If I, uh, I, like I said, sir, I don't recall the specific charges. Okay. Do you know uh, how that case ultimately resolved? Have you, are you familiar with that? No, sir. Okay. Talk to any other employee of JSO other than Integrity, uh, Officer Chastain, CSO Recruit Smith, and Officer Borisati since this incident. Section four. I spoke with BIC Garrett that night. Okay. Um, And not, nothing specific about the case, sir. Like, people were asking me about something about it, but that was it. Okay. Have you, um, did you ever do a witness RTR report? No, sir. Okay. But you did give an uh, interview with Integrity? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going to, we're going to play a video now. Um, of the incident itself. Sean, this is, that's it, and Gabby, it's the same sort of bait stamp numbers on this as well. And we'll provide a copy. Actually, right here. It's on top of the microphone. Sorry, thanks, Sean. All right. So do you recognize, before we play this video, do you just recognize what's, what this is? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, in this, in the still frame, um, before we start here, uh, can you see Miss Martinez depicted there? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, and is that you standing there, Officer Andres? Yes, sir. And then behind you is Officer Smith, or CSO Recruit Smith? Yes, sir. And then right here, that would be Officer Chastain? Yes, sir. Okay, and this gentleman here, is that uh, Lucius Richardson? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, I'm going to play the I'm just going to play the video through one time. It's okay. it's only a minute and 5 seconds. So I'm going to play it through in its entirety and then we may go back and and stop and I may ask you some questions along the way. Yes. Sir. Okay. So I just want you to see it full time through. After reviewing that video, uh, Officer Andres, is it still your position that uh, you could not see Officer Borisati strike Ms. Martinez? 
objection of the conduct? Yes, sir. Play through it again here. Okay, I can make it a little bigger. Play through it, and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna pause it, and I'm gonna ask you some questions. Okay. Do you know who this is? No, sir. Okay. I'm sorry. Do you know who this officer is right here? No, sir. At B00379 here, do you see uh, Miss Martinez sort of put her arms behind her back? Do you see her doing that? Yes, sir. Um, looks like she's attempting to show you her handcuffs. Would you say that's a fair assessment? I don't recall that, sir. Not to me. Okay. Do you remember her saying anything about uh, her handcuffs? No, sir. Okay. She wasn't complaining that her cuffs were too tight or anything like that that you can recall? No, sir. I don't, I don't recall that. Okay. So right around frame B00679, uh, that's when Officer Borisati touches her uh, on both shoulders. Is that, is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay, and I believe this is what you described as a transport back to her original position? Escorting her, sir. Escort. Yes, sir. Did you, and you're standing uh, next to Officer Borisati when he does this, correct? Yes, sir. So you're, you're, you can see Officer Borisati? The back this. of him, yes, sir. Okay. Are you aware that he is engaging with Ms. Martinez at this point? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. And this is uh, back in the corner between the door and the trash can that you were talking about earlier. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Okay. At this point, uh, can you see Ms. Martinez? No, sir. Can you see Officer Borisati? Just partial of them, sir. What parts? Probably from what I recall, sir, just like his right side, like the back side of his right side. Okay. a little too far here, but B00798, is this the first kick of Ms. Martinez? I believe so, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. At that point, can you see Officer Borisati? Yes, sir. And you can see Ms. Martinez. Do you recall seeing Ms. Martinez make this kick? Yes, sir. Like that her leg come up. Okay. So you could see Ms. Mar Martinez make this kick? The, the leg came up, sir, so I assume that was a kick. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, and then there was a second kick very quickly after that. Did you catch that? From the rec from what I recall, sir, they were successive. Like, you know, there were one, two. In rapid succession. Yes, sir. Okay, fair enough. All right, and the one I, I paused it here uh, at B00830. Do you, well, let me, that's fine. I'll stop it here. At the time that she kicked, do you know if Officer Borisati was contacted by the kick? Check yes, sir. Oops. Yes, sir. From my, from what I recall, it it landed. The second kick might have landed on this uh, genital area. Okay. From what I, I recall at that time. Okay. And you could see that. Well, the leg. Yes, sir. The foot and the leg came up. I'm gonna go back just a just a hair here. Okay, is that a more accurate depiction of the kick? I think she's kicking right there. And that's where at B00827. Like I stated before, sir, from what I recall, there was successive. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second one landed on his genital area part. Okay. And, his geni and I'm just trying to see from your perspective, from your vantage point at the scene, you saw... I think you just testified that Miss Martinez, you saw Miss Martinez kick Officer Borisati in the genitals. Is that correct? From what I recall, yes, sir. 
Okay. At that time. Where was Officer Borisati standing in relation to Miss Martinez at the time that she kicked him in the genitals? From what I recall, sir, at that time, um, Officer Borisati was on the other side, more towards out of that bay area okay. at that time, when I recall it. Okay. But you could see the contact between Miss Martinez and, and Officer Borisati? At that time, sir, I, from what I recall, yes, sir. Okay. Stop it at B00848. Were you able to see Officer Borisati bring his arm up and back? No, sir. At that time, I don't recall that. Is that because there was some obstruction? Um, yes, sir. Um, like I said, I, I, they kind of disappeared in that corner from what I remember, from what I recall. Can you tell me what the difference is from between where Officer Borisati was standing when he got kicked in the genitals versus where he was standing when he decided to punch Miss Martinez? I don't understand the question, sir. Where's the difference in location as to where Officer Borisati was standing at the time that he was kicked in the genitals as opposed to when he, where he is pulling his arm back in B00848? From what I recall, sir, um, he was, he was, they were both in the corner. On that video, uh, you know, from that, I can't see from that vantage point where I was at, sir, but that's what I recall. But you could see her kick him in the genitals. Like her, like her leg come out, and I assume that was a kick from my vantage point. Okay, but I thought, didn't you also testify that she landed a few good kicks? Yes, sir. So you did see it land? Well, from my vantage point, yes, sir. Okay, from your vantage point, did you see Officer Borisati pour, pour, pull his arm back? No, sir. Why not? Because everything was in, it was a dynamic, sir. Um, it was, everything was going so fast that what I was concentrated on, I was kind of fixated on the lower part of the bodies where the kick was coming from. Okay. And it kind of caught me off guard, too, okay. where hey, did this just actually happened. Did this officer just get kicked? So it was a dynamic situation, and it caught you off guard. Nothing to do with the computer monitors. Well, there was computer monitors there too, sir, and then I remember um, there's a poster shop there on the window also. Okay. And that like was, I, was that blocking your view of Officer Borisati pulling his arm back, as shown in scene or in uh, still frame B00848? Was the computer monitors blocking your vision of that? Well, I sir, like I stated before, I didn't see him pull back his arm. And from my vantage point, um, he was trying to control her, like, uh, like I stated. Did like, you see him try to control her? Later on, yes, sir. I at mean, the, there, at there was, the time? At that time right now, uh, from, my, from what I recall, sir, they were struggling. Okay. With each other. And he was he's still being kicked. Was he struggling with her? Uh, that from my vantage point at that time, sir. Yes, sir. That's why I came over to try and help him out, see if he needed some help to, and assistance to control her. Okay. So you were aware that they were struggling. Did you look away at any point? No, I did not look away, sir. I moved forward. So you went towards towards it. Yes, sir. Is that to why did you move towards it? Like I stated before, sir. I mean, I can still see her legs flailing, and from what my, from what I recall on my vantage point, it seems that Officer Borisada needed my assistance to try and control her. Okay. So at no point in time you did you look away from Officer Borisada? No, sir. Not at this point. Right. But you did not see him pull his arm back? No, sir. Okay. Let's continue on. I'm going to stop here at 00872. Did you see Officer Borisati pull his arm back again? That I point? can't. Where's the answer? I, it's Officer a blur. Borisati is right here, sir. That's his arm. Did you no, see sir. Okay. Do you recall? Well, that's fine. Well, let me go back. We missed it.
zero 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 eight eight two. Did you see Officer Borisani bring his right arm back? I don't recall that, sir. Um, beginning at B00912, um, I believe you, it looks like he's walking towards, you, you begin to walk towards Officer Borsati at that point? Yes, sir. Okay. And that was because you were uh, in belief that Officer Borsati needed backup? Yes, sir. At that point. Okay. And it's your testimony here today that you did not see Officer Borisati strike Ms. Martinez, but you were going over there uh, to provide him backup? Yes, sir. And when you walked over to Officer Borisati there, and the first thing that you say to him is what? Objection of form asked and answer. Um, don't, you know, you're okay. Don't be stupid. And like I stated before, sir, they, they got cameras here. What was your concern with the cameras at that time? There was nothing, no, no concern about the cameras, sir. Then why would you talk to Officer Borisati about the cameras? Well, like I stated, sir, um, at that time when I approached him, he already had their pin against the wall in the trash can. Mm -hmm. And that was a way for me to de-escalate the situation. And I don't want him to retaliate on her after being kicked. Okay. And like I stated before, Post Ferguson, that's what everybody talks about. It's like being on camera. And I believe that that was, that was the first thing that came to my mind and stated, you know, to have the reaction that I want from somebody. It's like when you tell them that they got the cameras, they change their attitude or their behavior. Why were you trying to change Officer Borisati's attitude or behavior at that time? Like I stated before, sir, I didn't want him retaliating on Miss Martinez for kicking him. Was he retaliating against Mar Ms. Martinez for at kicking him? At that time, him? at that time, sir, no. He was just had her pinned to the ground. I mean, against the wall. Okay. Is there anyone here? Okay. So, scene B zero one zero three seven. Looks like you take your left arm uh, and grab Officer Borisadi's right arm. Is that fair? I wouldn't say grab it, just like touch them. Okay. If, from what I recall, sir. Okay. Do, do you know what the purpose of that was? Just to hold him like, you know, the, you know, give him assurance that he's okay. And... Okay. B01251. Is this when Miss Martinez goes down to the ground? Yeah, that's when she sat down, sir. She sat down. Yes, and sir. you're look are you looking at her at that point? Yes, sir. Okay. Stop it. B01303. Uh, at that point in time is Miss Martinez still sitting? No, sir. Has she fallen down? That's when in my vantage point, sir, that she banged her head on the ground on her own. Okay, so you saw this? Yes, sir. Okay. After seeing that, is it fair to say that you turned and walked away? Yes, sir, because she seemed like she was okay. Okay. What made it seem like she was okay to you from your perspective? Well, she banged her head on the ground, sir, and so I started walking away just to part of the de-escalation de process. Okay, you so know. she, I, wanna, I wanna understand your testimony here. She seemed like she was okay to you because she had banged her head on the ground? Yes, sir. Okay. 
and because you thought she was okay after banging her head on the ground, you, you turned and walked away. Is that fair? Yes, it is part of the de-escalation process. De-escalation process. Was anybody else around Miss Martinez at the time that you decided to walk away? No, sir. Well, she can see the blue uniforms. Okay. Um, but was it an active uh, physical situation when you turned and walked away? I don't understand the question, sir. You said that you turned and walked away to de-escalate the situation. I guess my question to you is what was in need of being de-escalated at the time that you turned and walked away? Well, she was, I just wanted her to be, you know, to calm down, because um, since she's already mad with the with the blue uniforms, because after, after uh, Officer Barasati let her up, um, she cursed him out, and I could tell that she was mad at us. Mad at all uh, blue uniforms? Well, I just assumed, specifically Officer Barasati. Okay. At that point, were you aware of what had just uh, what had occurred prior on that same date in the scores parking lot? Objection to form. Ask and answer. No, sir. Okay. So it was your belief that she was mad at police officers, but you did not know why she was mad at police officers? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Pause it here again at B01502. At this point, uh, I believe this is consistent uh, with what you were saying earlier is that after the altercation you walked back over to the the right window so to speak over there where officer or sorry CSO recruit Smith was standing and uh, officer Chastain as well is that is that is that your understanding of this as well yes sir okay and is officer Borisati standing there as well yes sir. Do you recall hearing anything at this point? I believe that she was crying at this point still. Um, I, I couldn't really recall, sir. show you the, the video and it's an entirety one more time and I'm gonna ask you a few more questions okay yes sir. Sir Andres, I, I know that you met with Integrity uh, the day after, on April 28th. I believe they asked you during that interview, uh, did you witness Officer Borsati strike Miss Martinez? Do you recall being asked that? Yes, sir. And do you recall what your answer was? Yes, sir. Okay. At the time that you were giving that interview, were you were you placed under oath? Yes, sir. I believe I was. But did he say that what you tell with integrity stays here? Did he say anything along those lines? I believe so at the end, sir. Okay. Here today, this is a deposition. You have been sworn in and you are under oath here today. 
Is it still your position that you did not witness Officer Borisati strike or punch Miss Martinez in the Sally Port? Objection to form. No, I did not, sir. I did not, on my statement, sir, I did not see him strike her at the Sally Port at that night. I know what you said in your statement. I, uh, what I'm asking you is here today is, is you st still, still the story is that you did not see Officer Borisati either strike or punch Miss Martinez at the Sally Port. Objection to form. No, I did not see him. Watch the video one more time through here. And I want, as you watch this video, I want to point you towards your actions um, whenever you see, as you described, uh, Officer Borisati. Um, well, after after the kicks are after Miss Martinez kicks uh, Officer Borisati, I would like to, for you to watch your actions at, after that point. When did you start walking towards Officer Borisati? Was that immediately after the kick, or was it after Officer Borisati started throwing punches? Can you uh, play that again, sir? Certainly. When did you start walking over to Officer Borisati? From what I recall, sir, on uh, that night, I started, you know, like I said, like I stated before, mm -hmm. as soon as I realized what was going on, that's when I started walking up to him and her to see if he needed some help. Had Officer Borisati already thrown a punch before you started walking towards him? On that video? It yes. looks like it. Had Officer Borisati thrown a second punch before you started walking forward? On that video, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. Borisati thrown uh, its third punch as, as you start to take your steps towards uh, Towards him, is that fair? According to that video, yes, sir. If if a if a fellow police officer is struggling with an inmate, um, is it is it common? For a fellow police officer to, um, would it be more common, I should say, uh, for a fellow police officer to assist the officer in, in uh, making sure that the uh, inmate, uh, as you said, de-escalate de the situation with the inmate? Yes. And is that what you were intending to do at this point? Yes, sir. And the way that you were intending to de-escalate this situation is by telling Officer Borisati to don't be stupid, they have cameras here? Well, that was after the fact, sir, because he already had her under control. Okay, when did you, when did you say, don't be stupid, there's cameras here? According to the video, sir? Well, the video doesn't have any sound. Okay, well, at that point where, from what I recall, she, he was, she was pinned right next against the wall and the garbage can. And he was holding her down. Would that be as shown in 
B01046? Uh, probably, sir. I think at the same time that I put my uh, hand on this arm. Okay. And it's about that time that you said, don't be stupid, there's cameras in here? Yes, sir. And that would have been after the three punches were thrown? According to the video, yes, sir. Did you tell, uh, did you um, ask Officer Borisati if he was going to charge Ms. Martinez for kicking her? Um, there were talks about it, sir. Um, well, who talked about it? Uh, me and him. Sir, I'm sorry. Um, when I was handed, the, when we were having a small talk about um, when he got the, you gave the phone, after he gave the phone to the correction supervisor, and that's when Officer Matthews actually arrived at the scene also after rescue got there, or during rescue we got there. Officer Matthews was out there interviewing me about the, the battery on Officer DeBolio, on Officer Borisati. And that was, I'm sorry, Matthews? Yes, sir. What's his first name, do you recall? Uh, Frank. And is he a, a sergeant? No, sir, he was a policeman. Policeman? Yes, sir. And he was investigating the uh, battery on law enforcement officer? Yes, sir. In other words, he was investigating whether or not to charge Miss Martinez with another crime? Yes, sir. Do you know if Miss Martinez was ultimately charged with another crime of battery on law enforcement officer for I don't the know. incident that occurred in the Sally Port? I don't know, sir. Do you know if, if uh, Mr. Matthews uh, has any written reports from uh, his Bolio investigation? No, sir. Is that a no you don't know? No, I do not know, sir. Did he take any statements from you on the scene on that day while he was investigating the battery on law enforcement officer? He asked me what happened, sir. Do you know if it was recorded? Uh, on paper, I didn't write down any written statements. Okay. Do you know if it was audio recorded? No, I don't believe so, sir. Do you know if he was taking notes? Uh, I don't recall, sir. Okay. Um, what did you tell uh, Mr. Matthews about what what had happened? That uh, Miss Martinez kicked Officer Borisati. And that's all. That's is that the only thing that you you told Mr. Matthews about the incident? Yes, sir. Did you tell Mr. Matthews that um, what you had told Officer Borisati about? The cameras? No, sir. Did you tell Officer Matthews that you told Officer Borisati, don't be stupid? No, sir. Did uh, Mr. Matthews, do, do, if you know, uh, did Mr. Matthews have any conversations with uh, CSO Recruit Smith? I don't recall, sir. I don't know. Do you know if Mr. Matthews had any conversations with uh, Officer Chastain? I don't recall, sir. Okay. When you were talking to Mr. Matthews, was anybody else around? Um, I believe there was another officer that was with him. I don't recall who it was. I don't believe officer, uh, at that time, sir, I think Officer Chastain already left. Um, do you know I don't know who else was out there. I don't remember. Sorry, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to cut you off there. That's fine, sir. Um, what, uh, do you remember what time of day, approximately, this interview with Mr. Matthews was? Uh, I don't recall the time, sir, but it was after, I believe, rescue left. Was this before or after you had uh, spoken with PIC Garriott? I don't recall specifically, sir. It, it would probably have been, been after, or maybe I, I, I couldn't recall, sir. Okay. Um, and this is it, it's a little little confusing here, so I just want to make sure we're we're talking about the same thing. 
when you were talking with PIC Garriott, and he had requested to do a, a witness RTR report and was asking you about what had happened uh, in the in the Sally Port. That was from the perspective of whenever you do an RTR report, what what, what were you what were you what is the purpose of an RTR report, response to resistance report? Like I stated before, sir, if any kind of use of force was used mm -hmm. on on a, on a prisoner or a, an arrest or arrestee, mm -hmm. um, you want to make your right one for for CW deployment. Um, farms was used. Um, impact weapon was used. Uh, pepper spray was used. Right. Or if you were a witness or if any physical force that was used that led to um, injury to the RST. And the witness RTR is if you witnessed any of those um, use of force. And then on the physical force part, if the RST was actually, you know, was, was hurt and you witnessed that physical force that we use. Okay. So, you're, so the RTR report, you would be writing down how Officer Borisati used force in this, in this instance, for example. Yes, sir. If I had witnessed any physical force that was used, and then le that led to the injury of a, an arrestee. Okay. And it was your position that you did not see any physical force used by Officer Borsati? No, sir. Well, not the f not the force that we're questioning now. Okay. The punches. And so that's on one side, and that's with PIC Garriott, the RTR report, and what Officer Borisati did, the response to resistance report. That's the RTR report with PIC Garriott, right? Yes, sir. That's on one side. And then on the other side, you've got Mr. Matthews, who's investigating Ms. Martinez for potentially committing the crime of battery on law enforcement officers. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And so when you're talking to Mr. Matthews, you are describing what Ms. Martinez was doing at that time. Yes, sir. Okay. Because, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, you were able to see what Ms. Martinez was doing, but you were unable to see what Officer Borisati was doing? Junction form. Like I stated, sir, I assumed that she was kicking him because I saw the legs come up and hit, you know, they were directed on this, on this person. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you know if a case was opened on the, or if she was charged with battery on law enforcement officer? No, I do not know, sir. Even if somebody isn't ultimately charged uh, with a crime, uh, are the investigative notes ch typically retained by the inv uh, any investigating officers? I don't know about that officer, sir. Do you know if that, that the battery on law enforcement investigation that Mr. Matthews was doing was ever assigned a case number? I don't recall, sir. Or any sort of numbering. I'm not sure if they refer to it as case numbers or CCR numbers or whatever. Uh, any sort of number assigned to the Bolio investigation? Normally they do, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you happen to know what that number is in this particular instance? No, sir. Earlier, uh, you testified that after she had went to the ground, that, that in your, she seemed like she was okay, I believe is what you said. From my vantage point, yes, sir, from what I recall. Okay. Uh, Officer Andres, are you, are you uh, trained to diagnose medical conditions? No, sir. Somebody is exhibiting symptoms of injuries. Is it JSO's policy that that individual who's exhibiting those symptoms get the medical care that they need? Yes, sir. If they were. If they were what? If they were exhibiting those, you know, if she was in duress 
or in distress. Um, are some of are some signs of distress crying, laying on the ground, being disheveled? Are those some signs of distress? Not that particular moment, sir, from what I recall. Okay. Uh, are you trained? Uh, and how to determine if somebody is faking an injury or not? No, sir. Are you ever are you ever supposed to uh, judge the credibility of somebody's medical complaints? No, sir. If somebody complains of a medical injury, is it your job that they get the medical treatment that they deserve as a JSO officer? Yes, sir. After this incident, you don't know who called JFRD? No, sir. You didn't notify your supervisor? About? About this incident? About my supervisor, sir? Yes, sir. No, sir. Did you notify any supervisor? Well, J uh, PSC Garriott. Did you call there. him or did he call you? He handed me the phone or through the phone from the correction sergeant. Did you proactively tell anybody at JSO what had happened? At that incident, sir? Yes. As far as the use of force or? As far from as anything I, that happened in the Sally Port with Officer Borsati, did you inform anybody at JSO as to what happened? No, sir. This officer, uh, PSC Garrett, was aware of the situation. Did that? Did you feel the need at that? Did you feel at that point, once PIC Garriott was advised of what had happened in the Sally Port, that you had no further obligation to inform your supervisor as to what happened and what you would witness? No, sir. No, sir. You did not feel that you had an obligation or a duty at that point to come forward. Well, there was a supervisor that was already notified, sir. Okay, but you don't know who notified that supervisor. Well, I, I believe Officer Borsati did. Okay. Do you know if any of the corrections officers notified their supervisors? I don't know, sir. How, do you know uh, how Officer Garriott became aware of this incident? Or PIC Garriott became aware of this incident? As far I, think, I believe Officer Borsati notified him. Do you know if anybody told Officer Borsati that he needed to contact his sergeant or PIC, Garrett? No, sir. Were you surprised when Officer Borsati handed you the phone with PIC Garriott on the other end of it? Well, the correction sergeant handed me the phone, sir. Okay. The correction sergeant handed you the phone. Had the, had the correction sergeant already spoken with PIC Garriott prior to handing you the phone? Yes, sir. Okay. Why would the correction sergeant be speaking with PIC Garriott? Objection form. If you know. From what I heard, overheard, sir, um, Officer, Ga uh, Officer Borisati handed him the phone to speak with Officer Garriott, or PIC Garriott. Okay. Did you hear any of that conversation? No, sir. Okay. Next thing, the next thing you know is that you get handed the phone and you are to speak with PIC Garriott. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm almost done. Did you hear any? Um, did you hear Officer Borisati say anything to uh, Miss Martinez about her handcuffs? Is it prior, prior to the incident, sir? Yes. No, sir. Right. Um, anything along the lines of uh, kind of, kind of like the fuzzy cuffs? you're used to? Do you remember Officer Borisati saying anything along those lines? No, sir. Okay. 
At any point in time, did you go check on her? No, sir. Did you feel the need to? Not at that point, sir. At any point, did you feel the need to go check on her? No, sir. Any further questions at this point? I got a few. Okay, I have uh, about four minutes left on the video. Probably should change. All right, yeah, go ahead. Let's take a let's take a minute. Call the wait. Okay. Okay. This is media number two, and we're on the record at twelve fifteen. Officer Andres, as we sit here today. There's no question in your mind, is there, that Officer Boris Hade punched Miss Martinez? What I know right now, sir, there's no doubt in my mind he did after watching the video. But as it occurred in real life, did you perceive that Officer Boris Hade was punching her? No, sir. And you learned that from PIC Garriott after the fact? Yes, sir. And then you saw it in the sally port on the monitors as the corrections officers watched a replay? Yes, sir. You've watched the video a number of times today, correct? Yes, sir. And did, are you aware that within three seconds of Miss Martinez's first kick, you started to move towards them? Uh, from the video, yes, sir. When you got around the corner, can you describe what you saw as far as Borosade and Miss Martinez and their positions and what they were doing? Yes, sir. Um, Officer Borosade was holding her down against the garbage can and the wall, trying to control her. Did it appear that Miss Martinez was struggling? Yes, sir. I think she was still flailing. And I think she was still trying to kick him more, if I recall. And you were asked about the statement that you made to Mr. Uh, Mr. Borshade. Um, and you said that you, you didn't want him to retaliate. Did you see Borshade retaliate against Martinez? Before I walked up, sir? Yes. No, sir. Did you? Did you ever in real life, in real time, see him retaliate against her? No, sir, not the punches. So why did you feel the need to tell him something that would encourage him to not retaliate? I, I believe, like, sir, you know, he got kicked, so I didn't want him to retaliate. I mean, you know, some officers, if they do, you know, it, it, it's a perceived that I didn't want him to make a mistake because he just got assaulted by someone. Is it, is it common practice for JSO officers to retaliate against suspects? No, sir. Have you seen that happen before? No, sir. Um, is it JSO policy to not retaliate against suspects who strike or injure police officers? Not strikes or, I mean, not retaliate, but if a suspect was still resisting, even though they're handcuffed, we're allowed to use the necessary force to uh, protect ourselves and others and use the force necessary, reasonable force, to subdue that resistance. But would it be against policy to retaliate? Retaliation, yes, sir. Would that be against JSO training to retaliate against a suspect? Yes, sir. I don't have any other questions. I believe Mr. Granite just asked you if you were aware that within three seconds of Miss Martinez throwing her first kick that you uh, started walking towards Officer Borisati, and your answer was yes. Is that correct? Um, 
specific, you know, if, uh, yeah, within the three seconds, sir, I guess. Anything else happen within those three seconds? What do you mean, sir? From the time that Miss Martinez kicked at Officer Borisati to the time that st you started walking over towards Officer Borisati, within those three seconds, is there anything that happened? Yes, sir. They were still struggling with each other. Was Officer Borisati punching her at that time? I didn't see that, sir. You've seen the video, have you not? Yes, sir. On the video, does it show Officer Borisati punching Miss Martinez three times after she kicked him before you started walking over? Objection to form. I believe so, sir. So is it fair to say that, at least based on the video, that after Miss Martinez is kicked, Officer Borisati punches three times, and then you start walking Objection over? Objection to is form. That, is that fair? Objection to form. According to the video, yes, sir. I want to show you one more thing here on the video. I know we've seen the video enough here, but I want you to focus here on your mouth and see if you said anything and when you said it. Okay? Okay. Did you see your mouth open there? As if you were saying something? No, sir. I'll go back. I can't really clear. It's not clear. I understand it's not clear. It's the best we got. Watch it one more time. I don't recall saying anything, sir. Maybe I was just opening my mouth. You know, like I said, you know, I was shocked that he got kicked. So maybe I was just gasping, like, you know. I, I didn't say it. I don't recall saying anything. So that would you, so it may have been a gasp? Probably, sir. I'm going to show it to you one more time. Tell me if the gasp occurred before or after Officer Borisati throws his three punches. Objection to form. I don't back it up. Was Officer Borisati in the action of in the act of punching Miss Martinez at the time? I'm, I'm watching the my mouth, sir, like you asked me to. And so I'm looking at the mouth when I open my mouth. So I could it. All right, well, let's it's go back. It's kind of hard for me to go. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's go back, and I want you to, to keep both in mind, both the time okay. you open your mouth and what Officer Borisati, when you open your mouth, uh, in relation to Officer Borisati's actions. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. The time that you open your mouth, had Officer Borisati already thrown a punch at Miss Martinez? From that video, it looks like it, sir. And then you started walking over towards him? The first punch or? The, uh, After you opened your mouth, you started walking over to Officer Borsai. Is that fair? Yes, sir. I have no further questions. I got one question. Officer Andres, a few minutes ago, Mr. Johnson asked you if the video showed that Officer Borsai punched Ms. Martinez three times before you started to move. If the video shows that you started to move between the second and before the third punch, the video speaks for itself, right? Yes, sir. And the video would tell us the truth and not Mr. Johnson, right? Yes, sir. On a, on a redirect to that, um, would the video also show you uh, intervening to try to stop Officer Borisati from striking Ms. Martinez? Was that you were, what you were trying to do? When I came over there, sir? Yeah. No, I was trying to, you know, help see if you needed assistance right. in controlling her. Right. So you didn't see any of the punches whenever you started walking over to Ms. Martinez, according to your testimony. Is that right? No, sir. Sorry. Is that a no, sir? You didn't see any of the punches? No, I did not see the punches, sir. 
what I recall was she was struggling with her. So if you were, whether you were walking between the second or third punch or whether you were walking after the punches, it wouldn't make any difference to you because you weren't aware that any punches were thrown at that time, according to your testimony. Is that right? Yes, sir. No further questions. All right.